Hi everyone and welcome to the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome. This is a podcast all about knitting, occasionally some other crafty things, but mostly knitting. Um, and if you are coming back to watch the podcast again, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me chatting all about knitting. It's 2019 and I'm really excited for the new year. Um, I love New Year, it's my favorite holiday. Is it really even a holiday, but it's my favorite holiday. Um, I just love the fact that you can kind of, whatever kind of year that you had last year, you can just put a full stop, start a new page, and the new year is just so full of opportunity. Obviously, the change of a calendar year is not the is a pretty arbitrary marker for making changes in your life, but I just, I love it. I love the fresh start, and I love the summer. It's the summer here in Australia. I'm from Brisbane in Queensland, um, and I love the summer. I love the new year, so I'm really excited, and I'm really excited to uh, see what happens with the podcast this year. Um, so yeah. Let's just, I've waffled enough, let's crack on with some knitting content. I'll start with what I'm wearing, uh, which is this amazing top. This is the Deauville Tank by Tina C from issue 25 of Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. Um, I talk about it in detail in the last episode, because um, I did finish it just before Christmas, but I thought I would wear it today so you can kind of get an idea of how it wears. Let me just stand up a little bit. Ooh. It's a little bit long to wear with these shorts really, but I love it. I knit the size medium. Um, I knit it basically exactly to pattern. I use the same yarn, I use the same needle size as in the pattern. And I'm just really stoked with how it turned out. It's so comfy, it's um, really classic to wear, really easy to wear, easy to style. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really thrilled with how this is, how this has turned out. I just wanted to give it away today. Am I looking a little bit more tanned? I did go to the beach a few times last week when I was visiting my friends in Melbourne. Am I looking a little bit, I mean, I'm ghostly white at the best of times, but I just was looking at myself in my camera screen, but I was looking a little bit browner than usual. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my Deauville tank. I love it. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, if you have issue 25 of Pom Pom Quarterly, get on it and it will I'm sure be available for individual release probably um, mid-year this coming year. Um, so let's get on with some actual knitting. So I have a couple of projects to talk to you about today. Um, the first one, let's go, it's very like far-reaching today, um, is I have a half finished object. So I have a sock that's not quite KitchenAid yet. So the last few episodes I've talked about these socks, um, just some straight up vanilla socks in this amazing yarn from Nomadic Yarns, which is her um, Honey Bear colorway, and it's on her trusty sock base, which is a 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon blend, and that is the sock. I did a little Fish Lips Kiss Heel sticking out the back there. Um, I did it cuff down obviously, I did a 2x2 two two rib, fish lips kiss heel, and then a little wedge toe, round toe, I don't really know. And then I just have to sew the um, Kitchener the toe together. Um, I would have done it before I recorded, but I can't find my tiny darning needle anywhere. I um, can only find really big ones that are a pain in the butt to do with socks. So I decided last night before I went to bed, I really, really wanted to get this sock done. So I just did the toe decreases at about midnight. Um, but yeah, super happy with that. Once I've got the toe sewn up, be able to give it a little block. But this yarn is just gorgeous. It's an absolute pleasure to work with. It's really fun. Um, as you can see, I didn't use, I just kind of kept going, didn't use a contrasting color for the heel. And it just kind of did this. It's got like a little tiny stripe of the green between the two brown stripes, which doesn't bother me at all. Really happy about that. I have cast on the second sock because I have too many pairs of sock needles apparently. Where are you, honey? And I wasn't going to bother showing you because, I mean, let's see, two rows of rib. But second sock cast on. Sometimes it's good as soon as I finish one sock to start on the second sock. Um, 
because otherwise you can you can very easily lose momentum as I'm sure you all know so I'm knitting these on two millimeter needles high high sharp sock needles once again when I went on holidays was somehow allowed to take these on a plane I really feel like I shouldn't be allowed to take these on a plane stabbed myself numerous times but they don't seem to have a problem with them um, they're so sharp which is what I like I'm a very tight knitter so I do enjoy a really tight sharp needle when I'm knitting at quite a small gauge because I do knit quite tightly um, and I the cables are really good for socks they've got just the right amount of uh, bend so that is my closest thing to a finished object that I have and then I do have two other projects that I have cast on since we last spoke two weeks ago I feel like I'm going like a freight train today I'm not sure if I'm speaking any faster than usual but I'm just gonna take a little coffee break because I feel like I'm really oh, one of my ballet teachers used to tell me um, when he used to perform for a ballet company in England um, the I think it was the Saturday, Saturday matinee show the orchestra would always play faster because they wanted to get out to go have a drink so the ballet would always be about 15 minutes shorter and they'd have to do everything faster which is how I feel I feel like I'm performing in a Saturday matinee show just I do have two projects that I hadn't cast on when last I spoke to you, just before Christmas. Um, and I'm very excited to show you because they were two from my um, knitting crap out of my stash section that I did in the last video. If you want to have a little sneak peek at some of the yarns that are chilling in my stash and the plans I have for them, watch my bumper Christmas episode where I talk about that. But um, two of them have been cast on. Two! What, what an achiever. And they're both in fringe supply bags. But I have two. I have, this is my old camo one. I don't think I've ever shown you my camo one before. Probably had it about six months or so. But I love it. The handle's wearing really nicely. I love camo print. Um, very much suits my tomboy femme aesthetic. Um, here we go. I cast on and am um, a significant portion of the way through the link hat. So this is a pattern for Brooklyn Tweed by Emily Green. It was in the um, Holiday 2018 collection um, and it's just a really nice beanie. Um, there are two variations. There's kind of a skull cappy style and then the folded brim style. Um, 20 bucks to guess which one I've gone for the folded brim so there was a lot of ribbing that's just a lot of ribbing and that's kind of took me forever um, but as you can see that's what it will be like when it's done it's got a nice tubular cast on which is this is actually the first time I've managed to successfully do a tubular cast on for 2x2 two two rib it's really not that hard um, and I didn't do it as per the Brooklyn Tweed directions. I don't like doing the provisional scrap yarn um, tubular cast on. If I can avoid a scrap yarn anything I will. Um, so I just did my standard tubular cast on and then rearranged it for 2x2 two two rib. Then you do 2x2 two two rib braids and then you kick on with the pattern. Now I'm doing this, I believe it's on the recommended needle size. Yes, it is. So this is 4.5 millimeter needles. And yeah, I'm just I'm a couple of rows away from starting the crown decreases, but I love it. This pattern is just gorgeous. Um, sorry that I'm getting a bit ghostly, but it is showing the yarn really well. Um, so this yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Fauna colorway, and I am obsessed with it. I hope that this is coming, that it's coming up. It's this really kind of mur warm murky brown color, but then it has these amazing flecks of yellows and reds and kind of like primary color specks and occasional like little dark ones as well. You see, here's, a oh, here's a particularly good spot. I'm actually gonna get up. I hate standing up, so can you see that? Oh, it's just gorgeous. This colorway is absolutely beautiful. Um, I've had it for ages. As I said in my last video, I bought it to make a bracket hat from issue three of liner magazine and I just couldn't get this yarn and that hat to play nicely together couldn't get a gauge 
that I liked. It ended up being absolutely freaking massive. Um, and yeah, it just wasn't working. So I still want to make that hat. I will find, I will find a yarn for it eventually, but I'm really glad that this yarn is finally getting to become something. And yeah, it's just, it's so cool. This colorway is so great. Um, I highly reckon if you like murky browns it's so so beautiful it's a little yet less um I thought it would actually be more similar to the new color Yellowstone but that's actually quite a bit more yellow and then doesn't have the multicolor flex so Brooklyn Tweed Fauna oh <laughs> Brooklyn Tweed Fauna link hat very good hopefully I'll get this done very soon because once you start the crown decreases on a hat they just fly so that's project numero uno so the second project that I have to talk about with you today is one that I've actually spoken about the last couple of episodes but hadn't cast on yet and I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm loving it so much so far. So this is what I have done. So let me check and get this the right way around. There we go. <laughs> this is what I've done so far of my Ginsberg shrug. So this is a pattern by Nora Gorn for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, and I'm knitting it as part of the Yarn & Co Make Along, which is a make along run by a yarn shop in Melbourne, Yarn & Co, um, to kind of knit a cosy wintery garment ready for winter across the Australian summer, which sounds bonkers, but it's actually really, really fun. So um, I'm knitting this out of Brooklyn Tweed Quarry. I'm accidentally knitting it in the same colour as the sample. Um, I didn't realise when I bought the yarn that Nora had used... Um, Serpentine for the sample as well, but that's what I'm knitting it in Brooklyn Tweed Quarry Serpentine and it is such a beautiful color. It's this really nice Dark like bottle green. My dad would call it British racing green <laughs> um, but It's this nice dark green with these amazing little um, flecks of like aqua and Yellow and occasional like rusty colored bits as well. We find a good bit to show you up close like a serpentine stone. All of the colours of quarry are named after different gems. So, because it's so dark and this lighting's a bit weird today, it's a bit blown out, but that's, that's very blown out, but that's kind of what it looks like against my person. Um, and I love it. Um, it's a beautiful colour. I think it'd be really versatile. And yeah, I'm loving it so far. So this is the back piece that I'm knitting at the moment. It's mostly, uh, different textured stitches within a nice big old cable. Um, as you can see, it's kind of triangular shaped. So the garment itself is, uh, it's like a short sleeved shrug style cardigan um, that yeah, you knit the back piece and then knit the front and put it all together. So I'm really enjoying knitting on it so far. The decreases are getting slightly more, um, are speeding up, which means the rows are getting shorter. So, which is, really good because you do cast on quite a few stitches but then it reduces quite quickly so you, it's starting to get to the stage where you really feel like you're getting through the rows nice and quickly um i have done quite a bit i'm more than halfway up the back and the entirety of this all of this knitting has been done watching james bond movies so um one of the streaming services in australia called stan um, it's owned by Channel 9, has recently, as of Boxing Day, acquired every single James Bond movie. Um, and they put them all up on Boxing Day, and it's kind of my guilty pleasure is a good James Bond movie. So I've watched kind of an upsetting number of James Bond movies. Um, probably about seven or eight at this stage. I think I watched four the first in like 24 hours. But most of this knitting has been done while watching James Bond movies. A little bit watching other things with my friend when I was visiting him in Melbourne, but yeah. I'm really enjoying this pattern so far. Um, whenever I start a new pattern, I always, the first thing I do is just go through and quickly read through the instructions from start to finish, just so I can kind of orient myself with the construction and how I'm going to be making it. And this, with, like with so many other patterns, I, there's always a point in it where it's either a technique I haven't done before or a construction that I haven't done before where I get really intimidated and think I'm never going to know how to do that. Um, 
I don't have great like visual spatial skills so if I haven't done something and seen it in the flesh before I have a really hard time visualizing just from reading the instructions how something's going to look and if it's a technique I haven't done before a construction method that's a bit different to anything I've done before I really struggle to visualize how that's going to look and I get really intimidated and then sometimes it even like puts me off from casting on for a little while but like it's just knitting it's no big deal any and you look and other people have done it so it can't be that hard um, there's always people to help and also once you get there once you have gotten to the part of the pattern where the intimidating part so this is probably for me going to be like picking up the front side sections just as like the way it's done is a little bit I don't know why I'm intimidated by it but I'm a little bit intimidated by it but when I get there I'll have the garment and I'll be reading the instructions and I'll be able to see what I need to do so there's really no reason for me to be intimidated but it's something that happens with even simple patterns there'll be something I'm not really sure how it's going to look or what it needs to look like and I freak myself out um, completely unnecessarily but I'm just so excited and I'm just gonna love this so much um, yeah I'm knitting it on what size needles six millimeter needles I think that might be a size smaller than it is in the pattern Who knows? Um, you can look and see. I'm knitting it on a six millimeter needle from my Lickit Interchangeable set and yeah, I'm just so so happy with how it's going so far. I can't wait to have it finished and then in about a hundred years when it's cool enough to wear it. So I'm actually going to put it aside because I'm getting quite sweaty having it on my person. And that's the other thing I can't kind of, like in the middle of the day, I can't work on it. It's too hot. Um, you do get a really fun um, block as you go effect when you're knitting wool in hot and humid weather because your hands are nice and sweaty. So I always find that pretty funny. But yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm just, I'm really happy. I just love it so much. I can't wait to wear it and to have it finished and have more to show you. So that's kind of all the knitting that I've been doing. Um, all the projects that I've been working on. Um, so the last thing I have to talk about with you today is kind of some goals for 2019, some things that I've been thinking about. Um, the first thing I wanted to show you, it's not at all knitting related, but this is my journal slash diary for the year. I decided this year that I was going to buy a paper diary. Um, I've tried bullet journaling and it just doesn't work for me. It's too much effort. I know a lot of people find it really easy and good for like they just take 10 minutes but having to format it myself was just not working for me personally. Um, I like the idea of it but I'm just not very visually creative in that way so it doesn't really work. So what I did this year was I bought the um, Frankie Magazine diary. I don't really read Frankie Magazine but um, I'd seen on the internet that the art and all the all of the design of it it's done by an australian artist called edith i think it's edith ruer anyway i'll link her instagram down below i love her work just absolutely she um does beautiful drawings of plants i'll just give you an example of a good one here we go this is a beautiful one this is like a yeah a yellow gum leaf that she's drawn so this is for one of the months just really really beautiful and when I'd seen that she had designed the Frankie diary I immediately ordered one because I just love her art so much and I thought that being able to look at her beautiful designs every day would be really inspiring and really inspire me to get organized because <laughs> I want to be that's kind of one of my big kind of overarching goals well my kind of I don't really do like I love New Year's but I don't really do big resolutions of goal setting or anything um, in my word for the year though if I were to have one kind of I have one is just to be more intentional be more intentional with my time with where I invest my efforts and resources um, basically my new year's resolution is to spend less time like dicking around on my phone because <laughs> um, I think of all the time I just spend mindlessly scrolling when I could be doing something you know and also part of that it's really like a nice fancy way being like my word is to be intentional with my time Really, it's to stop dicking around on my phone and to stop like spending an hour in the evening trying to decide what to watch on Netflix. That hour I could be doing something much more useful. So <laughs> it sounds fancy, but it's really a bit more of a 
low-key goal for this year but I do have written down in my fancy diary I do have some goals that I want to share with you for the year just kind of overall things I'm aiming towards so the first one is first ones are kind of knitting related um, so I want to make six garments this year I think that's very doable it's like a garment every two months um, because I think that's what I've discovered this year I really love making garments so one every two months very doable I already have yarn in my stash for like half of those so not a problem at all um, and I also want to knit more shawls I only knit one last year which was right at the start of the year but that was one of my favorite projects of the year it's one of the things I got the most use out of so um, yeah that's definitely something I want to do I have recently ordered I have some yarn in my stash already to make a void shawl um, that I spoke about last episode I also have done my first yarn purchase of the year and I've bought some white gum wool to make a what's it called the midsummer rose shawl from issue of liner I spoke about it, I think in my first episode of the podcast that I really wanted to knit this and I finally just bit the bullet and I ordered some beautiful white gum wool to make that shawl and I also really want to make a is it called the garter goodness shawl by Stephen West in the first issue of liner magazine um, and I have some kind of ideas for colors for that as well so there's some shawls that I would like to make but definitely like knitting some shawls because they are something that I um, haven't knit very many of them but they're things that get a really high use and high rotation in my of all my knitted stuff so I think that's definitely something I want to be um, want to make and then kind of on the crafty side of my goals the other thing I said this every year for like the last three years but this year I'm gonna do it I am going to sew I have a sewing machine and I can basically sew like one year a couple of years ago I made all my friends tote bags so I excuse me I sewed I bought just bought some calico I sewed the tote bags and then embroidered them for my friends so I can sew I've the only garment I've ever sewn was in year eight home economics we made boxer shorts um, and so I have sewn a garment before that was a very long time ago but kind of since year eight home economics all I've done was like make those tote bags and like hem a couple of things so I really want to get into sewing um, I think it would be really fun really relax like a really fun craft thing to do um, and there are so many lovely patterns around that I would love to make and so yeah it just means like just getting it together setting up this having the sewing machine like set up in a place where it can just be set up rather than having to pack it up and put it away and things and yeah just kind of hopefully by saying it on the internet I'll actually do it I really want to sew this year um, and my other goals are kind of not quite crafty related um, well not quite not at all crafty related the first one is I want to read two books a month um, I used to read like 50 books a year last year I think I read four um, which is crap I can feel my brain turning into like a wet sponge cake <laughs> so um, definitely like getting off getting off the screens because I work on a computer all day um, getting off watching and just sitting down and reading because my like my attention span is nothing anymore like no wonder so many kids have issues like attentional issues because I my brain has just I can't focus on anything for more than five minutes um, so I think getting back into reading like whole books regularly would be really good um, if you guys are interested I'll probably if there's ones that I really like I'll talk about them here thinking of maybe like reinvigorating like a book review blog um, I do use Goodreads and like list and rate all the books that I've read on Goodreads I'll link my Goodreads down below if anyone is vaguely interested but um I am reading a couple of books at the moment are they here one of them is here so I got this for Christmas from one of my friends um, it's by black ink which is an Australian publishing house and it's the best summer stories um, I love the cover design of this and um, they used to do um, black ink used to do books like the best Australian short stories of the year and um, they didn't do that this year I'm pretty sure I got the last copy of this book 
in um, Melbourne because I think it was only available at readings which is like or it was quite li quite limited availability um, so it was only available I think at readings bookshops in Melbourne and my beautiful best friend <laughs> drove around as you can see the little sticker on the side that says Sam the 22nd of the 12th because he drove halfway around Melbourne and put this on hold for me um, for Christmas which is lovely and I've read a couple of stories so far um, I've only read the first two and they're a little bit uh, they're very typical Australian short stories they're a little tropey but hopefully there's some really good authors in here some writers that I really like so hopefully it'll pick up a little bit but I love short stories it's some of my favorite things to read so that's what I'm reading at the moment and I'm also reading I have no idea where it is. Let's see if it's like in arm's reach. It's not, I'll pop in a picture. It's called All of My Goodbyes by, and the reason I was looking for it, I can't remember her name, Maria Demopoulos, maybe. She's an Argentinian author. That's really good. It's kind of like a short novel um, about, uh, so it's a woman just like her talking about her life and all the places that she's lived. And it's, um, the structure is really interesting. It kind of just feels like breathing in and out. It's really great. Um, I'm really enjoying that as well. So definitely reading two books a month. because That's only 24 books in a year. That's not that many. And as I said, I really like short story collections. I like novellas and shorter novels. Um, it's very rare that I get into a really big book. Although hopefully maybe this will be the year that Hilary Mantle finally releases the third book in her Wolf Hall trilogy. Um, so hopefully that will come out this year because I love those books as well. Um, that was Book Waffle with Eleanor. Um, and my other goal, I want to try and get more into like grounding, centering myself, meditating every day, just feeling like a little bit, last year was not a good year for me. So I really want to kind of be focused. Um, yeah, just like a bit more grounded, a bit more intentional with what I do. Um, because also I'm getting older and I just really want to value my time a bit more as I kind of round out my 20s. So those are my goals for the year. Do you have any goals? Do you like New Year's? Some people aren't into it. It's not really a big deal for them. But as I said, I just love it. I love that kind of clicking over of the calendar, starting afresh and kind of all of the promise and possibility of the year ahead. Um, so if you please l let me know any resolutions or goals that you have by saying them on the internet you might actually do them that's my that's my hope by saying them on the internet I'll actually do them um, and if you don't really care about New Year but you have things that you're excited about coming up in 2019 please let me know as well um, as I said, I always say thank you so much for taking some time to hang out with me and have a chat. Uh, feel free to check out, check me out on Instagram and Ravelry and Goodreads. I'll link my Goodreads down below as well. Um, and yeah, leave a comment if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns. Feel free to leave them there. I'm really looking forward to this year and I'm really looking forward to sharing kind of my crafty exploits with you. So take care, have a great week coming up, and I will speak to you in a couple of weeks' time. Bye.